At this point, you've gotten the core things that you need to understand about message processing. But I would like to add a couple of additional queue features that are typically available to you when working with queues in this way. Uh, and they can be useful in certain scenarios. So first of all, a message can be sent to multiple subscribers. So that is, some queue mechanisms allow you to put a single message in the queue, but the queue can send it to multiple subscribers, uh, possibly simultaneously, but not just one. This allows a single message to be broadcast and processed in parallel. So examples where this is useful is in chat messaging. We might have 10 people who are part of a chat, and then I type, hello there, everybody, and I need those nine other people to go and get that message so they all can see that I said hello to everybody. Or it could be that I have a lot of people who want to receive notifications whenever the weather changes, or whenever a stock price changes, or they want to receive news updates. So I can go and put a message in the queue that says the weather is you know, 68 degrees, and then everybody who cares about it, they can all pull from the queue, oh, the latest update on the weather is 68 degrees. So there are certain queues that allow this kind of like uh, publish, subscribe mechanism, and that's a very useful mechanism to have available in certain scenarios. Another additional or useful queue feature is having a time to live on the message. That is, when the client puts a request into a queue, you don't really know when that message is going to be processed. So when you insert the message in the queue, you can typically put it in with a time to live. Uh, maybe something like 10 days or a month or maybe even a year. Or it could be on the order of minutes, too. It's really up to you. And this is useful because it prevents costs from skyrocketing should consumers never come online and take too long to process messages. Um, in other words, what if all the services are down that are querying messages from the queue? The queue fills up with these messages. Well, you're typically paying for the storage of those messages, and if the queues accumulate, that storage can grow without bounds. So by putting a time to live on it, the messages will kill themselves. Now, this could mean data loss, right, or the operation that the message needs to perform doesn't get done. So it's typically an option that you have to specify a time to live or a time to live of infinite uh, if you want to make sure that it gets processed ultimately someday and it doesn't matter how much it costs you to make sure that that happens. Another feature that you might take advantage of is a consumer-specified invisibility timeout. So when a consumer goes and pulls a message from the queue, it specifies how long that message should be invisible before another instance can pull the same message from the queue. And there's a little bit of a you know, pro and con here. You want to make the invisibility timeout short so that if you get service failure, the message becomes visible right away so that another service instance can start processing it right away. On the other hand, the, the problem with that, though, is that if you're still in the middle of processing it, it might become visible, and then another instance is processing it, and now you have two instances processing the same message at the same time. So that's not a good use of resources to have that. So you might say, well, let me go and use a long timeout instead. Well, that prevents the message from being processed multiple times simultaneously, um, but it does mean that if one machine that's processing the message fails, or the service fails, then it'll be a long time before the message becomes visible again and starts being processed by another instance. So you have to weigh this long and short kind of carefully to see what really works well for your some scenarios. Sometimes you want to have small latency on processing these messages, and sometimes the latency can be long, and you really don't care all that much. It depends on your particular scenario. Um, some cues allow you for the service that's processing the message while it is processing it, that it can periodically go back to the queue and increase the invisibility timeout or change it. So in other words, the service can pull a message from the queue, look at the contents of the message, and say, oh, you know what? This is going to take me an hour. So let me go back to the queue and tell the queue, let's keep this invisible for an hour. Or it looks at the message and says, oh, I'm only going to need to five seconds to process this. So it can go back to the queue and say, I only need five seconds of invisibility. So now you're looking at the content of the message, and you're changing the invisibility based on some analysis of an anticipation or expectation of how long it will take you to process that message. 
Um, and you can do this periodically too. You can say, well, I need another five seconds. I need another five seconds and go back and update that. Now, another thing is that let's say you're processing and then you do crash. Uh, so now the message is going to be pulled from the queue and it's going to be processed in its entirety. Well, what if processing the message does take an hour and you're 45 minutes into the processing before it crashes? Now, when, when you pull the message from the queue again, you have to start the whole hour's processing all over again. You've got to redo that first 45 minutes. That's kind of unfortunate and a waste of resources. So some queues have this feature where you can start processing the message, you're let's say 10 minutes in, and you can update the message in the queue, but still keep it invisible. Then you keep running, and if you crash when some other service instance pulls that message, it can look at it and say, oh look, the first 10 minutes were done successfully, so I can pick up from where the other one left off. So these are really optimizations. Uh, on the queue processing that allow you to fine tweak behavior and gives you more control over running your service in a more efficient, cost effective way. The last thing I want to say about queue processing is that sometimes you want to have at most once message processing, where the message is processed either zero times or at most one time, but not repeatedly. So this can be useful for time-sensitive data that expires or gets replaced quickly. Examples of this would be a stock price. So I want to tell everybody what the stock price is now, but if they don't get that in the next 15 minutes, there's going to be a change of stock price. Or similarly with temperature, or maybe with a sports score as a game is going on. Right? That information expires fast and then gets replaced with something else. So a way that you can accomplish this at most once processing pattern using the queue mechanism that we've already been talking about is by having the client place a message in the queue with a maximum time to live of that message. And then when a service gets the message, you set the invisibility timeout to be a value greater than the maximum timeout. So let's say, for example, a client puts a message in the queue with a timeout of 15 minutes. And then a service pulls that message from the queue, but sets the timeout to an hour. Well, now that message will stay invisible for an hour, but it's only going to live in the queue for at most 15 minutes anyway, and then it's going to go away. So in other words, the message, when it becomes invisible, it will never become visible again. Therefore, it will never be processed again. And this is how we get the at most once message processing behavior. Okay, so if the consumer crashes, the message expires before coming visible again, and the result is that the message processed zero or one time.